The abyss was not always brimming with demons, chaos, and energy. At one point, long before any observed, and long before Tharsdun found the shard, the abyss contained one entity, Dagon, the first demon in the abyss. This demon is immense, its glistening bulk heaving monstrously into the air as a writhing storm of hook-suckered tentacles unfolds from its shapeless lower body. Its two longest tentacles terminate in immense five-fingered talons. Its head is that of a deep-sea fish, twisted with cruelty and leering with a primordial intelligence. Stiletto-like teeth, immense and translucent. Dagon's body is not quite sea serpent-like, not quite mollusk, and not quite shark, but somehow horribly a combination of all three. Dagon first appears in D&D in 3rd edition, where he is announced as the Prince of the Depths. He's an aquatic creature that rules its own lair in the abyss. A horrible creature, and extremely mysterious. Not a lot is said about Dagon in 3rd edition, nothing about his rise, but more about his survival. It is said that he has survived the rise of the Tanari demons, in large part to his isolationist nature. When all other Oberth lords were called from the Queen of Chaos to aid her in battle, Dagon refused the call. All others who refused this call were destroyed, except for Dagon, who it is said the Queen dared not face. Today, Dagon is held as an oracle and a seer amongst the Tanari. They come to this ancient demon with offerings and sacrifices in return for ancient knowledge of the Abyss and its holdings that predate the rise of the Tanari demons. Dagon has built a mighty empire in his realm and is one of the mightiest demon lords in all of the Abyss. Dagon is served by all manner of aquatic demons and monsters in his realm, known as the Shadow Sea, the 89th layer of the Abyss. But Dagon's presence is felt on the material plane as well. He is sought by powerful and insane spellcasters for the ancient secrets he guards, and has been known to grant these secrets through such spells as contact other plane. Dagon knows a lot of everything, but on the ancient history of the Abyss, he knows all. Certain races worship him as a god, not just a demon lord. Kraken are known to worship him, trolls worship him, sea hags, water nagas, and many fanatics on the prime material such as Kuatoa that dwell in the depths of the open sea. So though we are not given too much information about Dagon's uprising or current abilities, he is the abyss within the abyss. His lair, Shadow Sea, stretches infinitely in darkness and water. He is the cosmic horror within the plane of cosmic horrors. And in 4th edition, he finally gets fleshed out even more, along with the backstory, or at least what we can observe of the backstory. For when Tharsdun, the chained god, first gazed upon the shard of pure evil, which the Oberths put themselves into and cast across the plains, he used it. None can say if Tharsdun created the abyss or opened the first passage to its depths, when the Primordials first entered the Abyss, Dagon was already there, the first creature in the Abyss. Calling into question if he's actually an Oberith, or some ultimately ancient entity that was first in the Abyss, alone in the Abyss, before any other passageway existed to it, he prowls the deepest waters of the Abyss. It is said that if Demogorgon is the machine of destruction, Dagon is the cool, calculating mind behind it, sowing chaos in subtle, intricate ways. An oracle and a sage, he is the one the demons look to, and he has rough alliances with many other demon lords, his intellect far beyond most demon lords. Whenever the Shard of Evil was first cast into the Abyss, Demogorgon went to claim it, and when Demogorgon went to claim it, Dagon rose out of the Blood Sea to challenge him for control a very rare sighting out of his lair, and the shard was claimed by another Obreth instead, Obox Ob, leaving many to believe Dagon was the last original demon lord of the Obreths. One of Dagon's greatest influences, though, is his cult. For over 12 millennia, undersea kingdoms and empires have risen and fallen in the aquatic lands beneath the Sea of Fallen Stars, largely unknown to many of the surface-dwelling inhabitants of the lands above. All the while, in the abyssal depths of the Trench of Lepak, the Oberth lords, known as those who sleep below, have slumbered, 
their nightmares infecting the dreams of those who swim in the sea of fallen stars. Eldest of those who sleep below is Dagon, prince of darkened depths. For centuries, the Oberth demon lord has plotted to obliterate an entire pantheon of aquatic gods on the far side of Toril in hopes of acquiring their divine power. First, this prince of darkened depths, Dagon, prepared an elaborate and deadly trap, setting in motion events beneath the surface of the sea of fallen stars that would place armies of his servants in control of the undersea depths. Then, drawing on long-forgotten Eldred's magics, Dagon restricted the influence of all deities. With his trap thus prepared, the Prince of Dark and Depths unleashed the first of five wild tides, the goal of which was to sweep large numbers of people into the Sea of Fallen Stars where they could be destroyed by Dagon's readied armies. When the first of the five wild tide portals opened, sweeping a large continent of people from their distant home into the Sea of Fallen Stars, they were cut off from their deities. They were quickly set upon by the forces Dagon had corrupted to his service. 70% of them were quickly killed, though they were joined by Murfolk and all together fought back against Dagon's agents. A minor setback. Despite this, Dagon's generational plan operated every 720 years, where large numbers were swept up by wild tides and deposited into the sea, the fifth and final of which resulted in a permanent portal between Seros and the sea. Since then, many of the cult of Dagon from the sea have entered into the cities, mingled amongst the populace. All those to oppose them swept up by the fifth passing of wild tides and disposed of. And truthfully, there is not too much more about Dagon. The one story of his cult, the one plan enacted, small relationships with other demon lords. But we are told he is the oldest demon lord, the wisest demon lord, a cosmic horror in the world of Dungeons and Dragons. And as his tale weaves through eons and eons of time, it becomes clear from his story that Dagon's schemes are not bound by the mortal concepts of time or space. His plans, intricate, insidious, stretch across millennia, lying dormant yet ever progressing. He will watch the rise and fall of empires, lands, the deaths of demon lords, the rise of demon lords. And while the realms focus on immediate threats and villains, such as more immediate threats as Demogorgon or Tasha, Dagon's inevitable emergence looms in the distant future, an unavoidable destiny etched in the very fabric of the cosmos of D&D. He is a certainty. He was there in the beginning, and he will be there when the world ends. And I will leave you with a small sea shanty told in the world of Forgotten Realms. There was once an isle dead west of the sunset, a place where the sun's rays danced carefree and bright, its shores all a-sparkle in white shining beaches and jungles aplenty with game day and night. They say that the people who dwelt there were happy. They say that they lived their life simple and fair. Yet one day a bitter wind rose from the ocean and took the poor folk by surprise, unaware. For ruin had risen in thunderous fury, a ravenous shadow fell over the shore, and when Father Day Dagon's black gullet gaped open, the waves ran with blood, and the isle was no more. 